Hi, welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. Today I'm going to be joined by Megan Kendrick. She's the owner and editor of Pool Pro Magazine. We're going to go over some of the things that Pool Pro Magazine focuses on. Pool Pro Magazine, like the name entails, is a magazine that focuses on the pool service professional. So most of their articles cover things that you deal with, with an emphasis on the business end of the service industry. So if you own a pool service business, I think you'll find the conversation that we have in this podcast very informative and very useful to you. Leslie's Pool Supplies is a proud partner of the Pool Guy Podcast Show. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals trusted partners since 1963, providing quality products and services to make pool care easy and solutions and expertise to do it right. So I'm joined this morning by Megan Kendrick. She's the editor and also the owner of Pool Pro Magazine. How you doing, Megan? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Hope everything you're holding up well over there. Yeah, we're we're getting by. It's a little it's a little nuts. I you know the kids are home with me, so hopefully we don't get interrupted. But we'll we'll see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> so um, can you tell the listeners a little bit about Pool Pro Magazine? Sure. So we're a trade magazine that comes out six times a year, and we cover all aspects of the pool industry. But our we definitely focus most on the service side of the business. Um, we're kind of the new kid on the block, I guess, as far as pool magazines go. Um, we were started in 2012, so it's it's been around for a while, um, but you know, not nearly as long as some of the other guys out there. And then I bought the magazine in uh, 2018. I had worked for it for 10 years, and um, my boss was ready to move on and do something else, and so I. Uh, I purchased it from him. Okay. And so where is your magazine available at? So we are distributed through Superior Pool Products and SEP locations. So if you go into one of their centers to pick up your stuff, um, they should have a rack with Pool Pro there. So you can pick it up for free in there. And you can also, if you'd like to get it in your mailbox, you can also order subscriptions online and we will send it to you. Okay. And is there a digital version available also? Absolutely. Yeah. So poolpromag.com is where you can look at the digital edition of the magazine. And then, you know, of course, you can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And we put out a lot of our content across those platforms as well. And so in lieu of current events, you have your ears to the track, so to speak. (laughs) You can't really avoid the COVID-19 talk um, and also the predicted recession or a downturn in the economy. So what are you hearing about this and how it affects the service uh, profession? Yeah, I mean, it's, I feel like it's still pretty early to be able to make any kind of predictions that would be close to being accurate. You know, some people are saying that this could be um, good for the the pool and kind of lawn care industries. Um, You know, certainly if people are stuck at home or concerned about leaving their homes, having a pool or a hot tub could be a great benefit to them. But um, but time will tell how people are impacted financially by this. I would guess that new sales could be tough this year, but hopefully people who already have pools will be more interested in using them and caring for them and upgrading them. So, I mean, I think we're all hopeful that there can be some opportunities there for us. I think right now pool professionals just need to be really careful in our, in our messaging. Um, You know, you want to make sure when people are feeling a lot of, um, you know, anxiety about what's going on in their lives, the last thing you want to do is to downplay it by, you know, saying that you're going to give them a, a staycation. I don't think anyone is thinking of this as a staycation right now. So <laughs> I would maybe stay away from that wording and just, you know, let people know that you are there to take care of them, that you'll take as many precautions as possible, and that, you know, you want to help make sure that their family is is healthy and safe. So I would kind of stick to that. I would stay away from anything that that revolves around a a staycation. And fortunately, most places are saying that um, pool service is an essential service. So even if you are being told to stay home, they're still letting a lot of you guys out there to do your jobs. So that's that's great. Yeah, I think that's the important part that we can still work out there to keep the pools uh, from turning green and looking good. And my area, we're open all year round. So it's really crucial that we're out there. Um, And what I'm hearing from some of the guys out there is that guys and gals is that um, they're not getting as many leads, of course, because everyone's kind of Mm. on the fence waiting. Um, So I think when this passes, um, we'll have to 
we'll have to check back and see where everything's at. I think everyone's trying to circle the wagons right now and just get through this whole thing. Yeah, I think for the next, I think for the next month, it's just going to kind of be everyone's going to be super cautious in everything that they do in their lives. And so, but at the, at the same time, it's like, this will pass. And so when it does, hopefully that means that there'll be kind of some pent up demand for our services that people are ready to, to get out, to be outside, to be in their pools, um, to take care of their homes. You know, hopefully that is what will happen. Cause that would be a really good thing for our industry, but, but yeah, time will tell. I mean, hopefully this is just a couple more weeks of us hunkering down and then things can start to kind of get back to, back to usual. Yeah. Let's be hopeful about that. Um, in your opinion, what are some of the things that are the most pressing in the industry um, besides what we just talked about? Yeah, you know, I think that in our industry, <laughs> I think it's kind of something that we're going to be talking about. We, we're talking about in our current issue, and we're going to be talking about some more in our next issue. Um you know, I think it's really great that we're starting to see this kind of turning point in the industry where people are coming together and trying to form that community of professionals and, you know, help each other out and sort of grow the industry for the next generation. That is all really great. And I hope that we can kind of just keep building on that. I think that is probably the biggest threat to our industry is just the lack of professionalism, the lack of, um, education and licensing and there's stuff out there there are great programs out there it's just that you know not everybody is taking advantage of them and so you get people in backyards who don't know what they're doing and that just looks bad for everybody so i think that that has been i think the biggest issue in our industry and it continues to be and fortunately we've got sort of this groundswell i feel like of people who are trying to change that like yourself and I think the PHTA has really taken that on as a mantle um, with their new leadership. And so I'm excited for some of the changes that are going to be coming down um, down on that front of things. But do you think that's do you think that's kind of one of the bigger things impacting our industry right now? Yeah, I think so. I think it's just the nature of pool service that anyone can get a truck, a pole right. and equipment and go out there and do it. So um, it's not like you're an electrician and you have to be um, certified and um, all, all those things go in, in hand with those kind of professions. And pool service is a lot like lawn care, where mm-hmm. um, anyone who wants to do it can get started fairly inexpensively also. Yeah. Um, and so you're dealing with that. And I think also there's a kind of a lazy fair attitude about um, there's pools around, in my area, there's 1.9 million pools in California. Yeah. And so it's kind of like, well, if I lose this account, I'll get the one next door and things like that. So I think um, it's a combination of those two things, the ease of starting a business and also the fact that there's so many pools in a lot of areas that um, a lot of guys don't really worry about um, caring for the clients to that to that extent. So yeah. it's a combination you, of many things. Do you think that um, adding licensing and certifications, do you think that will, will help the problem? I, I hear there's definitely some resistance. People are always nervous and resistant to the government asking us to do or pay for any more things. <laughs> and I definitely, I definitely understand that perspective. But on the other hand, do you think that having some more restrictions in place would help our industry? It's just hard because enforcing that is a difficult part of a lot of states. Sure. Um, in California, it's one of those things where it's not really in the budget. So if yeah. Um, how would they enforce it is the big question, I think. Um, yeah. Having people be certified, I think that's definitely necessary. But it's the enforcement part that is the problem. I mean, here in California, you drive around and there's handyman services everywhere. And they're not contractors, they're not licensed, but they're still driving around with their advertisements. So um, hard to really enforce these mm-hmm. kind of things. I think it's an industry-wide kind of thing where, as an industry, we have to kind of self-police ourselves and self-enforce it. So... Yeah, um, making it that way. And then it will kind of weed out the, the low hanging fruit, so to speak. And the guys that aren't educated or certified will not be able to get accounts. And I think educating the homeowners that hey, the guy in your backyard needs to be licensed and certified yeah. and have insurance. And I think yeah. that's another big thing is that um, in that perspective, um, you know, you wouldn't hire a plumber or electrician unless you, he was insured and certified. That's for sure. Um, but why would you hire a pool service technician that doesn't have anything? Yeah, no, that's a great point. I was just thinking the same thing, actually, that hopefully, because um, you're right, a lot of the onus falls to the homeowner to do their research. And so hopefully we as an industry can 
um, can advertise some of those programs and things that we have out there, the certifications and everything, so that a homeowner understands, hey, if someone's got their CPO or, um, you know, any of the other certifications out there, they, they probably know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, I think that's important. And I think also um, any downturn in the economy will also um, have the same effect. And during the 2008 mm -hmm. recession, the companies that weren't doing things the correct way were the ones that were losing business. So uh, it's been a boom time for the last 12 years. And so yeah. um, I think everyone just got a little lazy. And in this industry, the same thing. You know, there's so many, there's so much business out there that it's hard to regulate it. Yeah, absolutely. I I agree 100%. Yeah, so um, we'll just change gears here. So what are the other things Pool Pro Magazine writes about? Oh, man. So every issue, we try to cover um, a topic related to builders and a topic related to the commercial side of the industry. And then, of course, to service. Um, our focus really is on how to help you run a better business. And so um, we've got definitely we have technical information in there. And definitely we talk about products, um, things that are new on the market. But a lot of what we talk about is just you know, how do you run the most efficient and profitable service business that you can? So that's that's a lot of what we talk about, I feel like, you know, from, um, you know, route efficiency to marketing. Um, we kind of try to cover a lot of the things to make sure that you guys have the best information that you can, that you hear what people are doing from across the country. Obviously, we know that every pool market is a little bit different. And so we kind of try to touch on the different things that people are doing. And hopefully, you in California can learn something from what someone's doing in, in Pennsylvania that maybe you haven't had to think about before. And so, um, so yeah, we kind of try to cover as much as we can and make it as universal as we can. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's a good angle for the industry because I know um, a lot of information is out there about different aspects of it, but I think the business part of it is one thing that a lot of the service guys lack out there, the business sense of it. Um, it's, a lot of the background is not coming from the business world, although there are a few um, guys that I know that come from, you know, that were former CPAs or financial mm -hmm. planners, things like that, um, or real estate agents, th things where they have that business sense. So I think um, a lot of the stumbling of stumbling around is kind of getting that your head around the business end of it because it is a business at the end of the day. It's not just a service. Yeah, and it's it's something that I feel like I can relate to even more so the last couple of years since I bought the magazine than I did before. Then <laughs> I feel like all I suddenly understand all of the anxieties that you guys have as business owners and all of the daily struggles that you that you deal with in a much more personal way than I did before. So <laughs> it's been kind of interesting to. Um, it's kind of interesting to go through that and see how universal, even though it's a different type of business, how universal some of these things are, no matter what you're doing. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think any business can relate to each other just on the fact that, you know, we have overhead, we have how do we market ourselves and um, how do we control costs. So I think uh, to run a pool business effectively, you kind of have to have two hats. One is the customer service, uh, service side of it, and the other is the business hat. And I think if you fail at either of those two departments, your business is not going to make it. Yeah, absolutely. And you're, and you're right. It's something that I feel like in our industry, people just don't, it's not the background that they come from. Like you said, you know, a lot of people worked for somebody for many years and then they thought, oh, you know what, I can do this and make more money if I did it myself. And they start their own business, not really understanding what that means from an administrative point of view. And a lot of people, that's not where their skill set lies. You know, that's not what they're what they're best at. They're best at the technical knowledge. They're best at the service. They're best at taking care of their customers. And then when it comes to managing all of the paper that comes with running a business, that is just overwhelming. And so, you know, we do our best to try to help people understand that um, and to show them maybe some ways to make it easier on them. Um, you know, obviously we don't know everything, but we learn a lot from just talking to all the people that we do in the industry and outside the industry as well. And one thing I like to always tell tell the guys and gals in my group is that when you have a business, you're, you're in business to make a profit. And the way I explain that is, you know, there's a term called spinning your wheels where you're just kind of paying your bills, you're working. Um, but to make a profit in a business, you have you have money left over to invest and to save. And if you don't have that kind of mentality too, why? what is the purpose of you doing the pool service? Is it just to make a living 
or is it to be profitable? And I think there's, um, once you've been doing this for a long time, you realize that you can do any kind of profession at this point and just make a living. But a lot of reasons why you sh- people start pool service business is to make a profit mm-hmm. and to change the way they do things. A lot of them didn't have a lot of family time with, with their former employment. Um, one of the guys in my group was a car salesman working every weekend. Um, and so in that aspect of it, I think the pool service is very attractive because you have better time management and it's something that you can actually make a profit in where you actually are paying your bills and you have money left over. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's a very attractive profession. It's kind of funny. I feel like some of the articles that we get the biggest pushback are the ones where we'll have um, an expert talk about, um, you know, charging enough to make that profit and the, what you need to do to ensure that and raising your prices and, and doing all those things and the, we get the most those are the articles that we get the most feedback mm-hmm. from people saying that you're crazy that just doesn't make any sense you can't do that you can't charge that <laughs> but it's you know if you actually look at your numbers and determine what that um, what that rate needs to be like that's how you stay in business and um, either that or you got to try and find a way to cut costs and you just have to be pragmatic and um, bite the bullet and look at those things and make those hard choices. Yeah, I would think it would be good for the uh, Pool Pro magazine to maybe um, have some seminars and things like that, um, focus on the business end of it, because I don't think there's a lot of people actually working in the business end of the service mm-hmm. out there. So yeah. I just, just a thought. Yeah, no, I mean, we it's definitely something that we have on our radar and would love, would love to do. Um, that is one thing that I have learned as a business owner you know, the last couple of years is I have a lot of ideas and there's so many things that I want to do with the magazine and with our brands and to help the industry. Um, But, you know, I have a a family. I had a baby in October and there's some things that I just have had to put on hold. And that is frustrating, but it's like, you know, you have to take care of life. So I've had to force myself to find some balance. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I like the fact that the magazine is more focused on the, the service industry um, and also the business end of it too. It's not just uh, you know promoting different products and things like that. Um, and I think I think there's real value in that for the uh, the service industry for sure. There's not a lot of that out there. And um, like I mentioned earlier, there, you know the business end of the business is the important end of it too, along with the service end. Yeah. Well, and I also feel like. Um... There are, especially when it comes to the technical aspect of the industry, I am never going to know, and our writers are never going to know more than you guys know out in the field, which is why we, when we do those stories, we're clearly talking to you and getting our information from people who know what they're doing and are out there every single day. Um, but yeah, when it comes to the business side of the industry, um, I, I agree. I feel like that's where we can provide a lot of value. That's where we can really be helpful and provide a service to our readers is um, is finding those experts that know what they're talking about and and show show people how to do things do with things the right way. Let's uh, talk one more time about where they can get the magazine. You said Superior and SCP, and, and also they can subscribe, and there's a digital yes. edition also. And how often do you publish the magazine? So we went to six issues this t- the uh, for 2020, so we come out six times a year. Um, yeah, and so, you know, talking about the recession and COVID-19, you know, if your listeners want to get it at their home so that they don't miss an issue, it would be great if they bought a subscription. A few, you know, if, if a couple hundred of you decide to buy subscriptions because of this podcast, that really moves the needle for us. So <laughs> mm-hmm. for sure. What was your the website they can go to to get more information? It is poolpromagmag.com. Okay, that's easy enough. Say so Again, you yeah. can find us on Facebook and Instagram and uh, Twitter and all of those places as well. Same thing, Pool Pro Mag. Yeah, well, I thank you for your time. I know you're busy and you just had a baby, and I know that your kids have been pretty quiet during this podcast, so that's pretty good. Yeah, f- yeah. so far so far we made it. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah, so stay safe over there in Oklahoma. And, yeah, um, thanks, you too. Hopefully everything gets back to normal within the, the next month or so. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. And I, you know, I appreciate all you do for the industry with your, with the YouTube channel and the podcast and everything. I don't know how you have the time. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So again, the website for Pool Pro Magazine is poolpromag.com. That's poolpromag.com. And you can find the digital edition on their website and read through that. 
I think the articles, again, are very informative since they're focused on the pool service industry side itself. So that you're going to find a lot of content covering um, how to improve your daily operation and, of course, the business end of running your pool service business. Um, so I highly recommend uh, at least reading the digital copy if you haven't picked one up at your local wholesaler. And they're available on the rack at SCP and Superior Pool Products. And if you're looking for even more resources, you can definitely check out my website, swimmingpoollearning.com. I have an ebook available for $9.99. Plus, I have other helpful web pages on my site. And if you're in the industry, you're just starting out, if you've been doing this for a while, or you want to enhance your business, you may be interested in my coaching program. You can learn more about that at poolguycoaching.com. For $10 a month, you can text me. For $20 a month, you can call me. And there's also a group that you can um, chat in that you get invited into once you join the coaching program. Plus, you get 10% off your general li liability insurance through SPPA. You can learn more about that at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals' trusted partner since 1963, providing quality products and services to make pool care easy and solutions and expertise to do it right.